Hi, I'm Michael Stuckey. I'm Cole Ryder. And I'm Kyle Daniels. And our video is going to be over the Pemba effect, which is why does hot water freeze faster than cool water? Common logic would say that it would take longer for hot water to freeze than cold water because it would take time for the hot water to get down to the temperature of the cold water and then cross over into the freezing zone where the water would become frozen. Uh, this was not always true though, and this was started to be discovered by early scientists such as Aristotle, and then was rediscovered back in the 1960s by Pemba. He started to notice that hot water could freeze faster than cold water and was ridiculed by all of his classmates in school, and uh, this kind of encouraged him to look at the topic more, and he eventually tried to explain why hot water freezes faster than cold water, and we will cover some of these topics now. Cole, let's take a look at some of the reasons that the Pemba effect may be true. There's five main reasons. There's supercooling, convection, dissolved gases, evaporation, and the effects of the surroundings. Supercooling of a liquid occurs when it can go below its freezing point, or wire at zero degrees C. So why does hot water super cool less than cold water. Here's an explanation. We have, a, we have hot water and it's cooling off at a certain rate, but the bulk of the fluid here will remain unaffected while this will start to be, get cooler. And the convection currents from the cold water and the warm water changing their density will actually break up any attempt to try to super cool. Wow, the regular fluid will be at the same average temperature, so it experiences the same temperature change throughout. So there's no real convection currents in here. There's nothing going on. However, there are no disturbances in the cold water, so it's much more likely to go below zero degrees C before it experiences any kind of shock that will make it become ice. The convection currents that keep warm water from supercooling as much as cold water also can aid in the transfer of heat. In hot water, initially, since it's at a greater temperature, TH, while cold water is at TC, it'll experience non-uniform cooling from the sides and from the bottom. This will make, eventually, the top of the water hotter than the bottom. Even though the average temperature of the hot and the cold water could be the same, the rate of heat transfer in the hot water would be greater because the convection currents keep the rate of heat transfer very high. This will cause the sides of the hot container to freeze faster. Well, as in the cold water, it'll cool down uniformly, so it'll freeze from the top. This will actually block heat transfer, while this will actually make the heat transfer greater because the entire fluid is in contact with the ice. Another possible explanation for why hot water freezes faster than cold water is that hot water has no dissolved gases in it as opposed to cold water that has many dissolved gases in it. Just not having any dissolved gases changes the properties of the water, but it's questionable as to whether if it changes, the changes in the properties will affect whether it freezes faster. To further look into our topic, we're going to head downstairs and run some experiments on does hot water freeze faster than cold water. We did both an open system and a closed system test to get a better idea of if hot water actually does freeze faster than cold water. Because with an open system, we actually have another effect. Evaporation plays a role here. See, hot water will evaporate, making its mass less. While cold water, not a lot of it will evaporate. Most of it will stay in the fluid. So there will be less mass to freeze. So we boiled some water in for our hot containers and now we're going to pour it into our plastic bottles we're using for our 
closed system and the cut for our open system. And we chilled some tap water to get for our cold containers. After an hour and a half of freezing, the hot water bottle here seems to be slightly more frozen than the cold water bottle. Um, it just appears to have more ice and less liquid in it than the cold water, as Kyle will show you. Maybe a little difficult to see on camera, but as you can see, there's more crystallization in the hot water than there is the cold water. In the open system, we noticed an even bigger difference in freezing time than in the cold system. Right here, I have the hot water that was frozen. As you can tell, it's pretty much all frozen, not much liquid in there. Um, this is probably due to the evaporation effect that we described earlier, and the hot water was able to freeze pretty quickly. As you can see in the cold water, it's not as frozen as the hot water. As you, uh, there's still some liquid that is coming out as you tip it down. The last possible explanation we're going to cover now has to do, do with the surroundings and not with the water itself. Say if the hot water is on a thin layer of frost here, it'll be able to melt the layer of frost quicker than the cold water will, thus establishing a better heat transfer rate, which can allow it to freeze faster. Well, Cole, all this research about the Pimba effect is pretty neat, but how does it apply to the real world? It really does. There are certain applications when it comes to pipes that the Pimba effect could actually be useful. Let's say you're up north somewhere where the ambient temperature is really low and you have to pump water somewhere. Well, are you going to use hot or cold? Well, if you don't want it to freeze as quickly, you could pump cold water through the pipe and it wouldn't freeze as quickly. What if you're the manager of a hockey rink and your cooling system fails and then all of a sudden all of your ice melts? Well, it looks like you got two, two options here, Michael. You could either after you fix your cooling system, you could either drain all of the water out and replace it with hot water, or you could leave the cold water on the rink and see which one would freeze faster. In theory, the hot water, if you replace the cold water with the hot water, it will freeze faster to be ready for game time. Some problems with this could be is, obviously, evaporation has already explained that you will lose some of your mass, so you'll need to put a little extra water on as you're doing it. But it seems, as some of the studies show, that our heat transfer rate would be greater and you could get the ice frozen faster before the game. And you don't want angry Canadians coming to your city. I want to play right? hockey, eh? Hey? <laughs> Cole, I hear that the Pimba effect can not only be used by adults, but it can be used by children, too. In fact, it can. Here are some pretty cool videos of doing this just that. Something like that there. Or, um, um, TV right there. Here it is, uh... Okay, so this is why we are postponing the Cape Trinidad race. This is how cold it is right now. It's going to go up. You ready? Yeah, yep. That was water. <laughs> Frozen. What are you doing, Sam? So what I've done is boiled water in the kettle. So it's boiling water. We're going to pour it in here and then throw it in the air and it's going to evaporate. Ready? Oh. <laughs> And our presentation, or our, see, I just suck at this so much. Start this up. This is weird. <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not even talking about anything. Okay. Okay. So see Hello everyone, I'm Kyle Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be able to keep it straight. So it's game over. You want me to go okay. first? Yeah. Okay. All of a sudden, your cooling system fails, and then you have no frozen ice. Okay, let's reset that. <laughs> you ready? Oh, that's cold.